everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the future of application vulnerability management on a single platform. I'm Chris Fisher, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Tax Security, and I'm joined today by our CEO and founder, Trishneet Arora, and also by Akash Joshi, who's the lead in our security engineering team here at Tax Security. And together, we're going to take you through our application vulnerability management platform and share with you some of the benefits, some of the complexities in today's environment, and also some of the benefits of using our platform to address those complexities. So let's go ahead and start our, our presentation. And we'll take some questions as we go along here. So first of all, let's talk about the world we live in today. Today's organizations depend on applications to run their businesses and engage with their customers. And this has become even more important because of the pandemic and remote work. Because businesses are often unable to meet with their customers in person, they have to use applications. And the applications are becoming more prevalent and more complex. And this means this complexity increases the attack surface that you have to deal with as security teams. In their 2021 State of Application Security Report, Forrester said, apps remain a top cause of external breaches. And it, it also, in their survey data, it, it listed improving application security as one of the most likely top projects that security teams are going to be undertaking over the next 12 months. So when we talk about this complexity, what are we talking about? Most organizations have web applications. They have mobile applications. Uh, there's, there's more and more source code that's being used in the applications that are being developed. And because of supply chain, there's more and more use of APIs where you're relying on a, a data connector or a feed from something else to pull into your app, which brings with it increased risks. Adding to this complex environment, we have multiple teams. We have the business teams who are demanding the apps, saying we need more, we need more apps, we need to engage with our customers, which is causing the development teams to scramble to build these applications. They're, they're, they're trying to rush things into production. One of the things that's, that's happening now is that oftentimes the development teams will push things into production with vulnerabilities in them because they just don't have time to fix these things. So there's there's conflict there. And then there's the IT operations teams, the tech teams who are trying to manage the environments that these applications are running in and put them into containers and put them into different cloud services or host them themselves. So are these people aligned all the time? No, they're not. And, and this is why application security has become one of the top sources. In fact, in their study, Forrester said that the number one attack source of external attacks, according to the survey participants, was web applications, which everybody uses. So we know this is a problem. We know people have to deal with it. But the question as a security practitioner and a security leader is, where do I start? What tools do I use? How do I even start to address this problem without fragmenting my organization? Well. Traditional vulnerability assessment, if we talk about that, you, you, you can run a scanner and you can produce lots of data very quickly. And when you do that, you have complex reports to dig through, lots of CVSS score, lots of CVEs, lots of CVSS scores. Um, in fact, you can be overwhelmed by the volume of data that you produce with the scans. When you scan all of these applications across your environment, you're going to produce a lot of data. And digging through that data, usually we see people export it into CVS files and CSV files, and, and then you're stuck with a whole pile of data that you're trying to understand, and it's difficult. Which leads me to the next pain point. You know, you've got all this data, including many, many false positives from most of the tools out there in the market. This, this leads me to my next point about one of the issues with traditional vulnerability assessment for applications is, is how to prioritize. Most of the existing tools will give you standard buckets for the vulnerabilities that are found. Critical, high, medium, 
low. These are the areas where you're going to see all these things piled up. But then the question becomes, what do I do with all these? How many criticals do I have? Are they all critical? Is there something in the high bucket that's more important? So this is another issue with traditional vulnerability assessment that you're going to get these hundreds and or if not thousands of vulnerabilities that you find and then you have to decide okay i've got 50 critical ones which ones can i fix my tech team can't fix them all so this is why we saw a need in the market for a next generation tool and that's what i'd like to introduce you to now and start to talk about esof appsec esof stands for enterprise security one framework and we have introduced to the market a better approach to application vulnerability management with AppSec. It's a platform-based architecture that lets you do everything with one solution so that you don't have to use multiple tools to find the vulnerabilities and look at the data and figure out the priorities and do something about the ones that you decide to fix. So with a platform-based architecture, you have one place that lets you do everything. You can scan your application environments, the web applications, the mobile applications, the source code, the APIs, and find the vulnerabilities, onboard that data into the platform, and then you'll be able to analyze it. Our console provides you with analytics. It provides you, you can know the health of your application environment instantly and the ability with our analytics to disaggregate that single risk score into risk scores by your business units or by your applications, which is very important considering what we've been talking about, that application security. Um, once you have onboarded the data and looked at the scores, then you can start to do the management of these vulnerabilities across the multiple business units, across the technical teams, and using our analytics and the risk scores, you can then decide what is most important. What is my top priority? What do I do first? Which are my top vulnerabilities that I need to fix to reduce the attack surface and protect my applications? And when it comes to remediation, we help you automate that workflow with interfaces to the ticketing systems. We can generate tickets for your tech teams so that they are able to then remediate the critical vulnerabilities that you and your security teams have identified. So as I said, ESOF AppSec, it's a better approach because it's platform-based. It lets you reduce the number of tools you're using. It lets you do all of the work from finding the data around the vulnerabilities to looking at the scores and instantly having a readout that you can use to communicate across your organization and be able to then say, these are the most important ones, generate the tickets and automate the workflow for the fixes. So with that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Akash and have him go a little deeper into ESOF AppSec and introduce you to some of its main features and how you can achieve the benefits I've talked about using those features. Akash, over to you. Thanks a lot, Chris. So let's move to the next slide. All right. So here we will first talk about the evolution of this uh, ease of right. So ease of basically once when we started, uh, if you talk about the legacy VA solution that was already there in the market, which provides you the basic uh, vulnerability assessment scans and it gives you a lot of CVSS score, right? So that was the traditional and the legacy solutions which were there. Then comes to, if we talk about the risk-based vulnerability management. So now the, the modern solution that comes in the, the market, right? So those solutions were including, uh, if you have n number of vulnerabilities, n number of assets, right? So in those, uh, what are your main assets which, which you can prioritize, which are on high risk or which you have the severity uh, on a critical or either high, right? So those sort of assets and what vulnerability has been discovered throughout those assets, that is where the risk-based vulnerability management, the modern, uh, uh, the approach that, that was being used, where you can prioritize your assets, where you can prioritize your vulnerabilities, and then based on that, uh, you will get the 
proper report and stats, whatever the uh, risk score that you have and what exactly which assets you need to focus more. So if we talk about the next generation vulnerability management right now, we have a lot of data where we are collecting from variables like you know either the exploit is available uh, publicly, either the vulnerability, the application is internal or external. And on top of that, we have you know uh, machine learning and AI which superimposes and get more analytics based on the vulnerabilities which we discovered based on type of assets we have. We can segregate the assets into multiple, either it is web application, mobile application, or either APIs and IoT devices. So all these um, uh, different type of architectures that, that are combined and on top of that, AI and machine learning is working on top of that and providing a better reporting and a better uh, rich score throughout the organization, throughout all the assets, and also including the prioritization, the auto prioritization is also uh, a part of this next generation vulnerability management. This is how we are moving forward to with the technology, with data science, and also helping the organizations to basically, you know, given them a bigger picture where exactly what they need to do, where they need to focus more and how they can remediate other things. So if, if I move to the next slide, normally, um, when we were talking about the traditional uh, vulnerability management platforms, so those platforms which are still in the market, sometimes uh, the organizations are also what they're doing is they're still managing their vulnerabilities, still uh, using the Excel or CSV trackers to manage uh, all their asset inventories and also the vulnerabilities throughout all those assets. So you get multiple uh, things in, you know, uh, still in the traditional way, the old fashioned way that is through the Excel sheets or through the, uh, you know, the, the normal uh, CMS platforms, right? So if we talk about this, um, you got a lot of CVE data. Um, you don't know how to manage it. So if you find one vulnerability and, you know, there are a lot of CV, other CVs attached to it, you have multiple dependencies on any of the applications. You don't know how to manage. You don't know uh, where exactly what solution will be best suitable for uh, patching one particular vulnerability, or either you have to look for the other relevant CVE details as well. So this is how ESOS comes into the picture. We provide you, uh, you know, what exactly the overall count of the organization, uh, where exactly the the total vulnerability count you have, where you need to, uh, you know, look for the details, the remediations. Uh, if I just move to the next slide, right? So just under one roof. Uh, you get everything in one place, right? So you got web applications, you got mobile applications, uh, source code review, API. So all the data, all the vulnerabilities which have been discovered throughout all these applications, also along with the CVE details or either the, uh, you know, the, uh, the keywords if you want to search for, that is where the, uh, let me just move on to the next slide, okay. So you got multiple applications, multiple assets, and you know normally if we talk about uh, the approach, where exactly what we uh, you know uh, let me just uh, do here. So we got ten different applications in the system. We got uh, hundreds of uh, APIs and source code reviews right in in the pipeline. So people got confused how they're going to manage it. You have different departments, and you got different. Uh, application owners, right? So that is where you know the, the problem comes into, uh, uh, right? Where exactly you know the people don't know where what they have to do. Uh, the tracking part is not enough because they don't have a single platform to track what exactly the application vulnerabilities are, who is the owner, how they have to do, uh, you know, the complete back and forth over the emails. Uh, still using the traditional uh, approach. You got the tickets uh, system on a separate platform. You got the vulnerability management on a different platform. You got application security assessment uh, tools on a, on a separate uh, uh, environment. So this is how ESOF uh, combines everything. So if you're using ESOF, you got everything under one roof. You have your web application, mobile, all these assessments under one roof. And also you can use the ticketing system, which is built in into the platform itself. 
So now we have different architecture types. Um, and even if you want to look for the scores, uh, basically if we, so now if we talk about different architectures, as you can see, uh, we have mobile, web, and infrastructure scores. So all your application score, all your data, everything will be under one roof. So if you want to drill down, um, you got one single platform where you have all your assets. You can create multiple groups. You can create uh, different teams under that. You can assign applications to particular application owners, and then you can bring out the overall organization score. And along with that, you can have a complete uh, score for a particular single application or a single asset price score as well. So you can you have a, a bird eye view for the complete IT stack, what exactly is going on in there, and then you can drill it down to the architecture type, and then you can drill it down to a single asset score as well. This is the slide I was talking about basically when I was talking about everything getting under one roof, all the assessment, if we talk about different architecture types, web application, mobile, source code, and APIs. So if you want to perform all the SaaS, DAS testings, or either you know Android or iOS applications, automated testing, that is how we can perform everything under one roof under ease of itself. So you can use ease of as a tool. Instead of using different uh, uh, vulnerability assessment tools, you can use ease of and you can get all these different sort of assessments done only uh, only by one platform itself. So if you can move to the next slide, please. OK. So when we talk about different applications and different application honors, and if you want uh, you know, the scorecards for each and every application, so what exactly is going on for one particular application in the architecture type? This is uh, what I was describing in the um, initial talk. So you got 10 different applications, you got 10 different application honors, and now you want to have a drill down on what exactly is going on in one particular application uh, what is my score for this particular mobile application? What is the score for my uh, single uh, web application XYZ? So you can get a drill down score on each and every single asset or application, and also you can have a business unit score as well. So can we move on to the next slide, please? So you can create different groups. Uh, you can assign multiple teams, either it is business team or either technical team and if you move to the next slide, once you have assigned all the applications to those particular owners and created different business units, so you can have a score based on a complete business unit. So let's just say you have four different business units and you got uh, five applications in one business unit and three assets into the second business unit. So this is how you can get an overall score for those particular uh, assets and applications based on the different business units or either business uh, different departments as well. So you can segregate if you have, for example, for the last organizations, you got multiple uh, departments, multiple business units. You can have segregation based on the business units. You can assign assets as per the uh, different departments and the teams. And accordingly, you will get an overall score. So once you log into your console, you will get a score based on different business units and also when you go drill down to it, you can get a score for the particular asset into that business unit. Next slide, please. Right. So the most uh, uh, asked question, I mean, as per the, the feedback we will also getting from the, uh, you know, our different in, in the market, basically. So what happens is once a vulnerability appears into your system, once we prioritize it or either you know uh, it goes to the technical team or either to the patch department it takes longer time sometimes you know to patch that particular vulnerability but we don't get the timeline what exactly when was that vulnerability discovered when it was patched or either it's been reopened or not so iso provides you a complete timeline that when exactly the vulnerability was first discovered into your it stack and how long this vulnerability has existed before it's been patched or either it's it's been reopened. So you get a complete timeline on that along with the CVS score and severity and also the threat and impact and also the solution for that particular vulnerability so that you don't have to go back and forth uh, to find a solution um, and you don't have to look for, you know, or maintain the Excel CSV sheets or kind of like the trackers uh, to keep a track on those particular assets and vulnerabilities being discovered. That ease of does that for you. So you have the complete vulnerability timelines and the assets and everything in one place. 
Next slide, please. So another thing, another cool uh, feature that ESOF has is, is the correlation um, of different vulnerabilities and also, uh, you know, it helps you out. For example, if you search for one particular vulnerability, it gives you a list of top vulnerabilities. So if you want to see how many assets are infected with that particular vulnerability, you can select that, you know, and you will get the stats that how many assets are there in which that particular vulnerability exists and how many assets have still that vulnerability which is open in all those assets and how many times it's been reopened or patched. So you get a complete picture for one of your critical vulnerabilities if you want to search for that how many of uh, assets in my IT stack are vulnerable to this particular vulnerability. And out of that, how many assets been um, you know patched or either any of those uh, vulnerabilities been reopened or not. So that comes in handy where you have thousands, hundreds and thousands of assets and you don't want to you know, go again into that uh, uh, email trail mailing and also the, uh, you know, looking into those Excel and big bulky reports just to figure out what, what exactly needs to be done and how many assets are there which are vulnerable. So that can be totally taken care of the platform itself. Next slide, please. I think let's move to the next one. So, um, sorry, one slide back, please. That back to the tradition. Okay, thanks. As Chris has mentioned about the prioritization, right? So, ease of does the prioritization for you. So we have you can set the SLA uh, based on your organization policy as well, or either uh, ease of has the default policy uh, which is already set into the system. So once you have multiple assets and multiple vulnerabilities based on the severity, either it is critical, high, medium, low. So based on that, uh, you can set the prioritize uh, uh, how many days that vulnerability should take, or either which vulnerability is more critical that will come on top. So that you can, if you go to the prioritization section of ease of, you will get the list of all the vulnerabilities and all the assets which been prioritized that will come on the top and you know where to focus first, right? This is how it helps you to get a better score and patch all those vulnerabilities which are already there and you need to uh, basically focus on the critical or high vulnerabilities which, which have a very high impact. So ease of does that prioritization for you so that you don't have to uh, worry about or either figure out which asset you need to pick first to batch the vulnerabilities or which vulnerability you need to pick first to batch. Next slide, please. So threat enter. Now we, we were talking about the vulnerabilities. We were talking about the, you know, all other um, prioritization and other uh, assets and inventory things, managing the vulnerabilities. Now, what Threat Intel does is, so we want to get more information about the vulnerabilities which are there in the market, right? So what we can do here is what what ease of offers here is in the Threat Intel search feed. Basically, you can, if you have a particular CVE ID that you want to search for, you either you know, let's just say you just want to search for a keyword that says SQL injection, right? So instead of, it's kind of like a uh, a holistic approach that we have provided a complete global search over the platform itself and also uh, connected with the NVD and CV databases as well. So once you search for a particular keyword or a particular CVE detail, ESO provides you a list of all those uh, relevant data uh, that comes from exploit DB, that comes from NVD, and then you can select that, okay, if I want to see if this particular uh, vulnerability or this particular keyword exists into my IT stack or not. So that, if you, you just need to click on explore and ASOF will provide you all the relevant assets into your IT stack, which are uh, vulnerable or which have those CVE details or those uh, particular vulnerability name that you have searched for. And also uh, it gives you the other set of remediation and other references which will be there right so one that is already provided into the remediation playbook that is of already have those set of vulnerabilities and those set of solutions and, and remediation guidelines are already there but if you want to search for more alternates uh, so you have that flexibility that you can do from the thread intel feed itself uh, next slide please so 
it is not only just for the uh, the CV or the particular keyword that you want to search for, but ESOP also has a latest list of all the zero day uh, exploits or the vulnerabilities which are there in the market, right? So the newly discovered zero days, uh, you will get the latest feed over the platform itself. And then you can correlate that feed uh, for those particular zero day uh, vulnerabilities within your IT stack. So the vulnerability data that's been collected that that's been there uh, uh, from your IT stack, the zero day feed that will superimpose that into that uh, uh, vulnerability data and it will give you a list of all those assets which could be vulnerable uh, you know, to those particular zero day attacks. So normally what happens is, uh, you know, before these, the release of all these zero day uh, uh, exploits in the market, we don't know where exactly uh, either how many R assets would, could be vulnerable to those zero day um, attacks, right? So that is where the fast approach from ease of itself uh, that comes into the picture. So whenever any new zero day vulnerability is, is there in the market, what do you get is, you have that list of zero day uh, uh, exploits and vulnerabilities into the platform. You don't need to search for or either look into what exactly, how many assets, you know, normally in a traditional way, you will go to the um, different website, different sources, you will get the information about the zero days. You will look into your IT stack, what are the assets, what are the softwares or application that you've installed? Um, you know, do we have any of those relevant applications or uh, relevant vulnerabilities that that those zero day could be prone to, right? So in, in that situation, that takes a lot of time, right? And a lot of effort to uh, search about those assets to see where exactly, you know, uh, you have to, uh, or which assets you have to uh, patch those vulnerabilities in. That is how ease of helps you. Ease of get those fields ready, already, um, you know, up to date on daily basis over the platform itself. And once you want to have a look that, let's see, this is one of the zero day that is newly discovered. Does that have any relevancy into any of my IT stack? So you just need to, uh, uh, you know, click on that explore button that is there uh, over the platform. So once you have that functionality, you click on the uh, zero day exploit, the relevancy, and ease of will provide you the list of all those assets into your IT stack which have this uh, relevance to this particular zero day so that you can focus on uh, this. I mean, the heavy lifting you don't have to do, Azov does that for you. So it already provides you the list of all those assets. Then you can shuffle on and you can go one by one to all those assets and you can look into and you can, uh, you know, the guidelines are also there. You don't have to look for the guidelines or the patch or the remediations, what needs to be done. That is also there in the platform. You just look for the assets which are one which could be vulnerable to this possible zero day and then go for the patches the remediation and guidelines are also there so all the heavy lifting it done over the platform itself so that is how it helps you in a faster way uh, rather than using the traditional approach next slide please so we talked about you know different architecture types different uh, applications all those things all together. So this is how the ease of main console looks like, right? So you get an uh, overall score for the organization. You get the uh, stats for the open vulnerability trend. What are your open vulnerabilities there uh, throughout the complete IT stack? What exactly is the segregation, the asset categories? So ease of auto automatically categorize all the assets that you have into your IT stack. So it will give you a clear picture that, okay, this is how many uh, you know, web applications you have, these are the N number of mobile applications you got over the platform. And accordingly, you can have the score and uh, architecture wise score, business unit wise score, and have a drill down to the single asset score as well. So this is how the complete, uh, the, just, um, you know, uh, a preview of the main console for the ease of, uh, uh, and along with all the components on top of that. And Next slide, please. So one of the most interesting fact that we have is, you know, why can't we just fix the vulnerabilities? Why can't we just prevent these attacks from happening, um, you know, right on the SDLC cycle, right on the, on the code level itself before publishing the application or the code uh, of the production? So this is where DevOps integrations comes into the picture. 
So we have this, uh, uh, you know, all the integrations and the CI CD pipeline integrations within the platform itself. So you have multiple applications in the pipeline which are ready to go over the production. So you can get that assessment done directly over ease of itself before you go to the production. So you can fix the patches, uh, you can fix all these, uh, you know, uh, the vulnerabilities that have been discovered over the code level itself before you go live. This is how ease of tab apps uh, that comes into the vision and it helps you out right on the beginning, uh, right from the code level before, you know, uh, it's kind of like a secure SDLC cycle that you can build within your environment itself if you're using ease of. So this is uh, where I would just, um, you know, uh, hand it over to Mr. Trishneet. Um, this is all from my side and uh, this, the next thing I think Trishneet will take it forward from here. Thanks, uh, Akash. Thanks, Chris, uh, uh, for a lovely uh, background on the future of uh, application vulnerability management or application security. So uh, uh, I would just reframe a few things here. So uh, does it, ease of is the only tool which does uh, the source code review uh, uh, for your applications through the DevOps uh, uh, integration as well. So you can continuously scan your code uh, on a daily, weekly, or biannually, or quarterly, or monthly basis as per your uh, needs of the uh, organization. Uh, and you don't have to uh, do it on manual uh, basis. You can run the schedule on your uh, first at the first place, and uh, it will provide you the complete uh, brief report along with the remediation and uh, with the screenshots. Uh, and the time frame for source code review is four hours for ease of tool and same with the application security assessment as well uh, for mobile application or either the web application or either the API application. So uh, that's how the ease of uh, works uh, for AppSec and uh, we were talking about the score. Uh, I just want before we I start with this uh, slide. I want to give the background why the score is most important uh, thing in the cyberspace uh, in the age of uh, zero trust. You see a lot of CISOs uh, go blank when uh, any management uh, asks them a simple question. How secure is their application or their website or their entire uh, security uh, posture of the organization, right? So they don't have any appropriate answer for that. After spending billion of dollars on cybersecurity, uh, um, if you see that, you know, the attacks has been taken place in the past years, uh, the company that bank was spending more than, uh, you know, billion dollars on cybersecurity, but still got breached, right? The real reason of that is uh, people are not aware how secure they are. They they can't rate themselves from scale zero to five or zero to ten, right? So a likelihood of breach of any organization uh, is if the score between zero to two point five or two point five to four point uh, four, uh, they are more likely to be breached. Uh, so how would you get to know that your score is five point four or your two point four five or three point six, whatever, right? So ESOF provides you the score of entire application securities that uh, you have uh, in your uh, environment or your source code as well. And you can drill down that code or uh, your score of that application as well. If you wish to know that individual score of uh, one application that you can also grab that and you can uh, keep uh, the stats uh, as well and you can show it to the management. Oh, we were at uh, 2.1 score last month and this year we this month we are targeting for uh, six, right? And how we will target that we have a predictable score uh, in ESOF that you can see if you close how many critical vulnerabilities what your score would be look like. So this is the um, score and uh, by 2025 or maximum by 2026, cyber score will be like a civil score and it like we have a financial score system now so cyber score will be that important by 2025 and esof would be like a civil score and uh, any organization would like to have and would 
we are required to have a cyber score ease of score so and large companies governments globally and top fortune 500 companies globally have already moved to ease of and they are managing the entire uh, security posture of the organization not limited to application in the entire the uh, esof and we manage more than 5 million plus vulnerabilities uh, uh, in the age of zero trust and uh, we have machine learning program in esof which helps you to predict the future uh, breaches or the future vulnerabilities in your uh, it stack and uh, yeah so this is uh, uh, about this like a hood of breach so the companies that who are uh, between uh, 0 to 5.4 uh, score they are more likely to be breached right so uh, before you know that what's your score that you need to use the ease of uh, tool and you can uh, scan your application so we have a feature a uh, free trial on our website you can go there and you can run a free trial of application you can scan your application for free and you can know your scores right so that's uh, uh, the free add on tax security uh, provides right so just going to the next slide yeah so this is a customer success so we working with uh, us state government very closely and they are using our product from last few years uh, and uh, this is a testimonial from them and we have a great success story and we have 99.9% .9 retention uh, customer uh, uh, success uh, rate as well and uh, the people that who are managing their um, application security uh, in ease of they cannot just track what has happened last month uh, or last week uh, this is the only tool in the cyber space which give you the horizontal view of five years of your vulnerability, right? Uh, if today you are, in C, you are a CISO of uh, an organization and tomorrow there's somebody new in that, uh, that you can, uh, that person can still track whatever has happened in the past uh, months or years, that would be helpful for them. Or you go to somewhere and they're using ESOF, you, it will be really helpful for you to, uh, you know, know what the company was in the past uh, uh, era and where we stand now. And you can start your journey from there itself, right? So, and that's the only tool in the cyberspace which has that much of uh, historical data. Yeah, so we have been, uh, as I was saying, so we've been a customer uh, friendly company and has a lot of, uh, uh, you know uh, testimonials so esof has, uh, has two uh, pillars uh, that has been uh, successful pillars for esof has. one is the product engineering team that was developing this product uh, next in uh, vulnerability management product second is the customer that who provides the feedback on timely manner to to us and we improve ourselves on a timely basis right that's the best uh, way that we are improving uh, our ecosystem of vulnerability management attack security. So you can learn more uh, 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 about the ease of AppSec uh, through this brief video that we have on our website. And also you can, as I said, you can uh, launch a free trial uh, with ease of AppSec. Yeah, so you can reach out to us on taxsecurity.com and uh, before we end up the session, so we'll run through with the question answers. Uh, if you anybody has any questions, that we can we can do that. Okay, so I can see a few questions here that has been asked by attendees. Uh, does it help uh, to uh, compile compile the report from ease of AppSec and we can show it to the regulatory? Yes, you can do that. We are. Uh, uh, compiled with uh, various uh, uh, governments, uh, we are in panel with the various governments, uh, not just in India, but uh, uh, in, in the entire uh, uh, world, uh, in the US as well, North America as well, and we are also uh, in panel with uh, regulatory of Singapore as well. So this report is definitely usable for you if any uh, regulatory, uh, you want to show to any regulatory and also uh, that will be helpful for you that any regulatory audit that you have, you can not just only show the reports, you can also 
download the historical uh, vulnerability stats of your organization of your application uh, in a PDF format from ESOF and showcase to uh, your regulatory auditors and that would be really helpful for you to uh, present and uh, you know showcase your security posture and also this report uh, that you are scanning for example you're scanning an application today and we provide you the revalidation uh, add-on here and also the another feature that I would like to mention uh, before I take up another portion here uh, is you, you have uh, an add-on feature uh, in built in ESOF which is a manual pen testing for example you got an automated tool from our uh, ESOF uh, e app set you can also request for manual pen testing right you want to go beyond then just a vulnerability assessment you want to go for a business logic flaws that you can also do with ease of apps like, and that's only tool uh, application vulnerability assessment tool in the entire cyber security space which has an add-on manual pen testing feature in it yeah so the question is uh, how quick uh, can be the report can be generated for uh, mobile application iOS so uh, if you want to do a dynamic scan of uh, application uh, that report you can depends on the complexity of your application but uh, the maximum time is the four hours that you will get the entire report and you will have a score of your application what is your cyber score of that application and uh, you will get the report in four hours maximum of four hours and if you wish to go for manual pen testing then you have to uh, request for that and that takes its own time and but you can integrate your uh, entire uh, application security uh, posture with your uh, ticketing system but we also have our own ticketing system with ease of appsec uh, in build so you can assign any vulnerability once a vulnerability has been reported to you you can assign that vulnerability of way ahead to uh, your the web team or your security team or your tech team or your business team you can do that as well next question is can we integrate our existing infra uh, vulnerability assessment tool yes you can integrate your existing tools but that's ease of vmp uh, ease of AppSec only does the scanning and help you to manage the application security uh, vulnerabilities uh, in ease of AppSec. And if you want to integrate your further tools of infra or SIM tool or people tool uh, that you have to do uh, by ease of VMP, and you can integrate as many as tools that you have, uh, and you can in manage entire uh, vulnerability of your uh, company in one framework uh, uh, that we have already conducted a webinar for that uh, last month you can uh, uh, have a, a watch that uh, webinar on our website please yeah i think uh, that's uh, uh, the question that we had anything uh, chris or uh, akash that we have missed think, that we wish to add one question from uh, mr rahul kumar uh, so that is for most of the source code review tools, the primary concern is um, in the reports, lots of false positives. Is there any feature uh, which minimizes the reporting of false positive findings? So um, yes, Rahul, uh, that is our tool. Uh, it has this uh, complete pattern recognition and everything is in uh, built because of the, uh, you know, thanks to machine learning and AI. So we have the, the minimal false positive findings into this. and. Um, on top of that, as we, uh, as Trishnit has just mentioned about the manual pen testing, right? So there is also a feature for this source code review as well. So in where our analyst will come into the picture, um, the professional, they will go through each and every finding and will filter out, you know, even based on the risk and they will give you, you know, a filtered out report and the results where you can even virtually discuss on the findings as well. So this is how we can, uh, you know, completely minimize the false positive findings over there. I think good enough for today and we can conduct another uh, webinar on uh, just uh, looking at the SCR. Uh, I think we have more questions uh, related to source code review. We can conduct a, a separate webinar for only for source code review, right? 
So thank you, Chris, for joining us today uh, and in the late hours from the US. Uh, thanks, Akash. Um, and thank you, everyone, the participants that who have joined today. Uh, and keep uh, stay uh, tuned with us at Tax Security. And uh, we will up, keep you up posted about the future of cybersecurity. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess I would just add one thing, Krishnit, which is um, anyone who has technical questions, please do come to our website and you can fill out a request for demo and one of our people will be in touch with you and you will get a live demo of the product instead of just looking at the screenshots that you saw today. Uh, we're happy to do a demo for you if you want to look at the product and have someone from the security team take you through how these features work, what the user interface looks like. Um, please reach out to us. we would be happy to schedule that. And thank you for everybody who joined today. Thank you, Trishneet. Thank you, Akash. Um, that's all for today. Stay tuned for more news from Tax Security. Bye.